greeting viewers, I'm Awesome Joel27, and I have decided in the you know, wake of Sonic Mania releasing soon, I'll be playing one of my favorite Sonic games, Sonic Adventure 2. So let's just start off with the dark side story and hop right into it, shall we? Intruder alert! Intruder alert! Security breach at gate three. Intruder has been located in the north quadrant and is moving in the direction of the underground base. All units prepare to engage. Emergency battle formations. Standard battle procedures initiated. Locate and stop the intruder from entering the security area. This is not a drill. This is not a drill. <laughs> that was all. Let's take a look at what my grandfather was working on. A top secret military weapon. But the military shut down the research because they feared it. Alright, so we have stage one Iron Gate. So this is technically the first game in which we get to play as Eggman in a 3D Sonic game if you do not count um, Sonic R I believe there's another game in there I just can't remember which one it is and he adopts the gameplay style of Gamma from Sonic Adventure 2 or yeah, Sonic Adventure 1 and he alters the gameplay in a bit He's a bit slower, but he has a bit more features as improved to Gamma, such as the waist swivel. That means he could run in a straight line without having to, you know, move around while aiming. He just aims while moving. I think that's a very nice touch. And we are starting off the game. Breaking into a military base. Fancy that, huh? It's evolved so much from a... Oh, hedgehog running in a field, huh? Many will say that this game is too dark for the franchise, and it kind of did start the whole dark games trend, but I think in this game at least it works just fine. And <laughs> Shadow the Hedgehog in Sonic 06 took it way too far. Oh dear. Oh! I suck at this game. I think that's probably the only time I've ever died in Iron Gate. Can I have a medal? So, Eggman's gameplay style is about combo chains. You see when you lock onto multiple targets at once, and you get that little number, the more targets you destroy, the better score you get in the top left, and that's how you get a better score basically all there is to it. There's no high-speed platforming with this one, unlike Gamma's playstyle, it's just still kind of based around speedrunning, but nah, not Eggman. Tails gets this kind of gameplay, too. I have to wait for this freaking incredibly slow elevator. For now, though, I'm not, I'm not going for any kind of, like, A rank or anything. I'm just shooting them up. That ranking system in this game is also incredibly. Uh, how would you describe punishing? It's it's very difficult to get A ranks on everything. And for kind of mediocre reward, okay, in the wall. And here's Omo Chow. You can try to shoot him. There you go. And he'll get up and be angry at you. No one cares on which out. Okay. Door. So this level... Um... Or... Uh... Yeah, we'll elaborate on the, the double story. So in this game in particular, it's, it's interesting because you get to play as the villains and the heroes. Um... Chronologically, the villain story comes first, which is why I'm playing it. That and Eggman's amazing mustache in the bottom left corner there. So we'll start it off with that. Um, so what Eggman is doing here is running to the center of the core to uh, find out in the next cutscene. <laughs> All 
Oh, I God. Have tried a little harder. Yeah, when I said the ranking system was really, really, uh, harsh, yeah. Yeah, it's harsh. You were so kind to release me, my master. I will grant you one wish. Now what? Behold the true power I possess. All right, so now we're playing Shadow for this first time, which for all intents and purposes he's literally a sonic clone not story wise or anything but gameplay wise he's exactly like sonic such as eggman is exactly like tails or rather tails is like eggman as tails was not going to be playable originally i believe so this boss battle is easy even though i got stuck on literally nothing and i got hit okay i'm a liar okay these boxes need to stop Alright, so what you gotta do is you just, you know, wait for him to zip around, having horrible accuracy. Uh, he, he's like Mega Man, he can only shoot in like one direction. And he starts shooting his missiles, and you're supposed to homing attack onto his cockpit, but it seems Shadow decided, hey, let's attack the, uh, the missile silo and get hurt. So now I gotta waste more time. He can jump on these boxes and I think hit them, but he destroys them very quickly so it's not really a actual good idea there we go just gotta collect my rings again make sure I don't die he'll do this oh uh, well, well alright then I'll be, I'll be right back Okay, with with a million technical difficulties, my computer in 360 acting up, I'm back, and we're getting exposition from Edgy the Hedgy over here. Um, while he's narrating here, um, thoughts on Shadow's character? I think the characterization he gets in this game, especially with you know the voice actor and such, actually works incredibly well. However, in every game since, he's kind of been straight up edgy the hedgy broody instead of uh, a kind of like no, I'm not sure how I would describe this kind of shadow but he's more reserved and not just like oh I'm dark and broody he's just kind of like okay no nonsense I'm gonna do the thing all right well I'm doing this boss battle way better than I was earlier and I, I employed the the tactic there of standing on the boxes oh He's, he's doing the laser blast, which is incredibly easy to avoid considering, you know, the speed of sound and all that. Okay. Stop that. No laser beams. I wonder, can I hit him while he's charging up the beam? I'll try that in a second. 
Okay, now he wants to shoot freaking bullets at me. No, 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 You don't do that, sir. Stop that right now. I don't think I can get that high up. Oh, he's shooting two incredibly slow moving laser beams that are easily avoidable at me, and I almost got. Oh my god, it's a third one! And I killed him. Breakdance. And that is Shadow's boss fight. Destroying that guard robot was spectacular. So, Shadow, you are the military's top secret weapon. But what did you mean when you said you will grant me a wish? Bring more Chaos Emeralds. Shadow, wait! I'll be waiting for you in the central control room on the Space Colony Ark. Oh, I forgot to mention it during uh, Eggman's level, but that song's called Remember Me. I think it's excellent naming there. It's like, Remember Me, Dr. Eggman? Dr. Robotnik? He's called Eggman now, officially, forever. It's always Eggman in Japan? Okay. Tutor, okay. So, Rouge's gameplay is an extension of Knuckles' gameplay from Sonic Adventure. One with a few... Upgrades such as moving around is amazingly uh, responsive. Like, they go fast and they just go wherever you bring the stick, and they actually have um, proper turning physics, unlike the uh, other characters in this game. They're just amazing to control, and they have these uh, kick combos and stuff like that. Rouge uh, specifically kicks, I think, Knuckles punches. And it's treasure hunting. You search around for the Master Emerald bits, just like. Sonic Adventure 1, because we needed to put Knuckles in this story for some reason. There's one right up there. Uh, here it is. So, um, if you haven't noticed already at the bottom of the screen, you can see that Emerald Shards are locked off. And that's pretty much the killing blow to the gameplay of Rouge and Knuckles in this game. In Sonic Adventure 1, it was tolerable for most people. I enjoyed it. Some people didn't like it. That's fine. But in this game, they made it absolutely terrible by somehow making a treasure hunt linear. That's right. Um, you could only see certain emeralds at a time on the radar, so you could walk straight past one and not find it. And there's the other one. Um, it seems a lot more um, simple than it sounds with the whole uh, how dumb it seems to be, but it really is when the levels get bigger. Like here, it's no problem, but the, yeah, later on it gets so much worse. And I think, yeah, I know where the emerald is. So, okay, we don't hop onto this turtle. 
we dive down, these Sonic characters can actually swim. We get on the turtle. Uh, we magically grab it, you see, with, uh, Rouge has bind powers, I think. Okay, no, 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 this is not gonna work him, but the emerald was there. Um, I have no idea what Rouge's music is named, but I think this one's called Bright Sound for Dry Lagoon. Right. Um, Rouge and Alton Knuckles also have these, uh, very cool, um, movement-based moves. Like you saw there, I spun around and used a special attack, and I think that's very good. You can use it to find all sorts of goodies. Although, you wouldn't really notice that while playing normally. So, like, I remember this one, uh, hard mode emerald is locked behind a thing where you have to circle jump right next to a whole bunch of hazards, so you have to do it very precisely. And it took me ages because I didn't know you could circle jump. Spin jump, whatever you want to call it. Oh my gosh, this turtle. Yep. Uh, if you, you, ba if you look at the timer, that's why people don't like Knuckles and Rouge levels. There's a lot of waiting in some of these levels, especially Dry Lagoon with its turtle gimmick. Which is a nice gimmick and all. It's cool, it makes the level memorable and all that. But they are very slow. So we, we just sit here and wait. Another note to talk about in this game is uh, this soundtrack stands out from most of the Sonic soundtracks because it's not just rock and electronic rock. It's more like... Okay, I screwed it up again. It's more like... It, the, the, it plays different styles of music for the different characters. If you notice in the background here with Rouge, this is jazz music, right? And it fits her character well of being the, uh, the treasure hunter, jewel-obsessed, kind of like spy character. And that's probably why, because she's a spy. Then with, say, Eggman, you get industrial music, which is absolutely perfect for him. Like... If you just listen to the soundtrack while playing his levels, it is magnificent how well it goes with him. Then, like, um, Sonic and Tails and Shadow all have metal music, but variations of metal music. Tails has more electronic, Shadow has more, uh, not necessarily heavy metal, but more like edgy metal. <laughs> and Sonic just has straight up metal. It's not like, um, like I'd say these two soundtracks, Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2 soundtracks, are some of the best soundtracks in the Sonic franchise, but for completely different reasons. Um, in Sonic Adventure, it's because, you know, each song matches perfectly for the levels, like, they, they're slower for some slow levels, they're faster from fast levels, they're chilled out, whatever, but they match the levels really well. In Sonic Adventure 2, it's for the, a different reason of the songs match the characters. And there's Big the Cat right there. I didn't know he was on this level there. But um, I am playing the 360 version. And Big the Cat shows up in all of the levels. Why can't I get that? Yeah, I'm just gonna... Uh, restart the level and just skip forward. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that's something people. That's why people don't like the treasure hunting. It can be tedious at times, especially with the radar system. Uh, how it's gimped in this game. And there it is. Oh, it's moving. Okay. Get, get the frick. And for that. Dry Lagoon is gone. Uh, it's 10 minutes here, I believe. Um, no, more than 10 minutes. Uh, that was awful, but hey, I got 117 rings, hailed the Master Chief, and I got rank B somehow. <laughs>